The rise of the social media celebrity has brought about a new era of fan idolization. Ask any child who they aspire to be like, and more often than not, they'll tell you the name of some internet personality. And now, more than ever, we have the ability to connect with these influencers. Connections that sometimes have a darker side. Let me ask you, how well do you know your favorite creators? Tell me, I'm asking you. From the recent scandals over at Rooster Teeth to the all too fresh imprisonment of online superstar Austin Jones, it may not be as well as you think. The fan personality relationship is one easily abused by those in the online limelight. But why? That's a good question, Other Ryan. You see, social media has created a hyper-reality wherein the distance between regular individuals and their idols is slowly shortening. And now we're seeing an even more dangerous development, the emergence of the stands. What the fuck? Look, in reality, stands have kinda always been here, but the prevalence of access has only exacerbated their presence. <laughs> Look, I'm getting way ahead of myself here. To truly get inside the heads of both these creative abusers and the fans themselves, let's start with one internet personality that not only tore down his own career, but whose scandal aided in the deteriorating reputation of an entire media empire along with it. Rooster Teeth. For over a decade, Rooster Teeth has built its following through relatable content and its intense focus on community. But for one beloved RT employee, Ryan Haywood, he was about to take his relationship with the community to a whole new level. Since 2011, Ryan has garnered quite the name for himself within this RT family. Whether it was his work in animation, Twitch live streams, or his quirky character hosting Rooster Teeth Associated Channel Achievement Hunter, Ryan spawned many a fond memory. Memories that have now been severely muddied along with the name of the institution that he worked for. So, how did this happen? There's a saying, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And over Ryan's nine year tenure at the company, he had garnered quite the adoring fan base of his own. And it was this relevance that would ultimately bring him one heck of a fall. You see, Ryan wasn't just a creator, he was actually quite the family man. Marrying his high school sweetheart and having two children of his own, for Ryan, his family was everything. Or so you would think. You see, Ryan wasn't without his flaws. After all, he is human. And in the summer of 2020, these flaws would be exposed front and center in the mainstream. I've had an experience with Ryan Haywood. This is Tessa. For two years, she has been allegedly in relations with one Rooster Teeth employee, Ryan Haywood. It all started on why I made an Instagram in August 2017. Oh, and this is Melissa, someone whose admiration for Ryan quickly turned into something much more intimate. Both of these young women have been huge fans of Ryan Haywood, but as we'll soon find out, these two girls were much more than just big fans. But let's rewind a bit. Ryan Haywood's lovable character was quickly put under the microscope when some not so flattering images surfaced on the open forum 4chan. Now, what was initially perceived as perhaps a catfishing photo leak soon turned into a slew of allegations accusing this married man of taking advantage of more than one adoring fan. Some in a very risque fashion. These allegations stretching back not one, two, but three years. Tessa and Melissa being just two of these now 30 plus accusers, there's more to this story than meets the eye. What would follow is a bombardment of videos, news articles, and fans expressing their horror across the interwebs. Now we need to remember that as of this time, there has been no legal action taken against Ryan Haywood, nor have all of these stories been proven true. Ryan Haywood, a character that they had loved so much as part of the Rooster Teeth family, was now possibly a criminal. Haywood initially reacted to this situation on Twitter, taking full responsibility for his actions, saying he's made mistakes, and he has since left Rooster Teeth to focus on rebuilding his family life. But was he sorry, or was he just sorry he got caught? 
You see, these situations can often be a double-edged sword, as I'll get into later in this video. Regardless, there's a bigger picture here. You see, his actions affected individuals beyond the victims or even his family. But it left a scar for over 400 employees who call Rooster Teeth their home, causing a company-wide shakedown. Residual shrapnel that now has left a stain for millions of passionate fans. However, what's even more shocking is that this pattern of behavior isn't the first of its kind by any stretch. As an influencer belonging to a cherished institution, it's easy to make the argument that the fame had gone to his head, and perhaps it was the thrill of living on the edge that sparked any of these inappropriate conversations. Whatever the case, this most recent situation only emphasizes that it takes one bad egg to ruin the whole carton. Ultimately, Ryan Haywood was accused of a lot of potentially illegal acts, but he's still a free man. He hasn't been arrested. He hasn't been charged with any crime. Ryan took things right to the brink, but he didn't step off it yet. However, what happens when you walk right up to the edge and then step into the abyss? Ryan hasn't done it, but Austin Jones certainly did. And he's currently paying the ultimate Price. When building a career over social media, accumulating millions of viewers and hardcore fans, there's a certain weight you feel dropped on you when your favorite creator is suddenly unmasked for the evil Marvel character they truly are. Or in the case of Austin Jones, an utter scumbag. You'd be amazed at how many influencers have been accused of abusing their power and relevance. And honestly, I was in the dark until I started researching this topic using a little tool called TubeBuddy. Using TubeBuddy not only helped me discover just how widespread these situations are, but it helped me discover whose stories were the most important to cover according to the fans that watched these creators. If you make videos and you wanna understand what your audience is interested in and how to get more views, I have a free link to TubeBuddy down in my description below. While Ryan Haywood engaged with fans that were clearly underage, Austin Jones did a little more than that with women that were definitely under the age of consent. It was on a cool spring morning that this internet superstar turned neighborhood sex offender would hear the pound of the gavel sentenced to 10 years in prison after pleading guilty to owning less than appropriate material of children. But just how did the career of a beloved musical artist end up quite like this? Let's go back to the beginning. To celebrity status to manipulate teenage uh, girls who are fans The year of is 2007. The place is Susan's lair. And from the beginning, Jones was always a character. Yowza. Now, since the inception of his musical career, it was clear that this boy was onto something bigger than anyone could have expected. Over the next several years, he would amass a fan base of thousands of adoring teens, and it was through his YouTube channel that he connected with these fans. A connection that little did we know would lead to a much more sinister place. By 2015, Austin had released an array of his own music plus covers and was quickly becoming a familiar face in the entertainment world. It was a big year. There was Warped Tour. And oh boy, that's when everything got turned upside down. In a now closed change.org petition, a miscellaneous fan gave us a forewarning that too many missed. In short, the petition read that Austin Jones had been abusing his status to solicit inappropriate actions through direct messages from underage fans. Some as young as 13. In well, instance, he asked the girls to repeat how old they were, 14 or 15 years old. Uh, he told them they were trying out for modeling opportunities. But this was really only just the beginning. In the following years, this predatory behavior only continued. This time, pushing the envelope even further. Jones famously telling one girl that he was so lucky to be talking to him and that she should send him lewd photographs to prove just how big a fan she was. However, as more persons came forward, this clean cut wall Austin had spent so much time building was quickly closing in. 2019 being the year that he was sentenced to 10 years in prison for possessing inappropriate material of minors. Justice was served. 
But in this world of cancel culture, sometimes the word justice is really just a wolf in sheep's clothing. Here in the modern era, after a stressful 11 months, this already disastrous Sunday of a year needed one final cherry on top to push our mental states over the edge. The cherry in this poorly thought out analogy, none other than YouTube commentator, Pyrocynical. Now, if you're not familiar with whom I'm talking about, back in 2014, a UK-based commentator began posting on a little dinky media site we now know as YouTube. After a string of MLG montage parodies went public, Pyro took a sharp turn in creative direction, YouTube commentary, particularly satire and drama. And after this slight diversion from his previous content, it only was a short matter of time before this boy was blowing up. Six years and four million subscribers later, Pyro's story has yet again taken another drastic turn. And like the other personalities I mentioned in this video, not for the better. That's because if you look up his name today or particularly a month ago, you'll see a slew of videos accusing one pyro of less than optimal online behavior with, you guessed it, underage fans. Why is this always the story? Okay, so how did we yet again get here? It all started around the end of October this past year when an individual by the name of Ivory Rasmus posted a series of tweets accusing Pyrocynical of grooming them on the social media app Discord. You see, that's a no-no. Needless to say, the community grabbed onto this story like a flinging dong for justice. <coughs> you see, if there's anything that this community is really great at doing, it's jumping the gun on some serious accusations. Now, I'm not gonna show many of these conversations here, but I'm sure that you can find them looking around the YouTubes with various keyword searches, pyro bad boy, pyro did bad, pyro bad, all of those things. I'm sure you can find it. In short, many have pointed out various holes in Ivory's claims, such as there not being any evidence of pyro acknowledging that Ivory was in fact underage, then also Ivory's hesitance to contact Discord or law enforcement, and claims by other persons that Ivory has lied about their age before. And you see, Pyro didn't sit well with these responses either, so he decided to make a response himself. I'm gonna use this video to address the allegations made against me. Recently, to those who are unaware, I've been accused of grooming a 15-year-old boy when I was 19. While not denying the conversations took place, he did clarify that no grooming occurred but did acknowledge that it was irresponsible of him to engage in sexual role plays with Ivory without verifying his age and continuing after learning Ivory was 16 and apologized for it. Now, I don't really want to dig into this any further, but it does raise an important question. Why release these types of discussions now? When, according to Pyro, these two seemed pretty mutual up until September of this last year. I believe this goes back to the fan personality relationship. Something that I mentioned at the beginning of this video and have explored in the cases of Ryan Haywood, Austin Jones, and now Pyrocynical. Accusations of social celebrities abusing their power and influence. But what if we flip the coin? Because there's another very dangerous side of this relationship. And that's the rise of the stand. The way fans interact with their online idols today is unlike any other time in history. Though the feelings around idolization are very much the same, we're now able to connect with these personalities in ways that we used to only be able to dream about. Now, according to the Urban Dictionary, a stan is defined as an overzealous, maniacal fan for any celebrity or athlete. See, it comes from the fusion of the words stalker and fan. Or, you know, maybe it comes from the Slim Shady song. I don't know, stan can be great. That is, until they turn on you. Let me explain. First of all, I don't hate stans or stan Twitter. Throughout my teenage years, in many ways, I was part of this very culture in some ways that I'm actually still proud of. 
You see, the danger of the stan is not the stan themselves, nor the passion that they have for whoever they are standing for, but rather the danger lies in the level of commitment they have as a stan, how much their time and energy is placed in caring or worrying or fighting for the people that they idolize. When this fan personality relationship gets too close, we may have a scandal on our hands. Look, man, I want to be positive about the stand. I just want to say, hey, let these kids do what they want and oh, they'll grow out of it. But I'm worried it may be too late. A lot of these stands have projected their own self-esteem issues and insecurities upon celebrities that make them feel whole. What was once seen as fringe behavior before, the invasion of privacy, obsessive fantasies, aggression, and possessiveness. Complete and utter disregard for people's sense of well-being seems almost to be expected now in order to be a true fan. It opens up the floodgates for personalities like the ones we've discussed in this video to abuse this relationship. Because when you're a true fan, what aren't you willing to do for your idol. Love me, Seamus. Look, I know we've only scratched the surface, but I want to open up the conversation. Where do you think this fan personality conundrum is leading us? Leave a comment down below. Remember, I'm Ryan, and I'll see you in the next video.